Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm currently a second year life sciences student studying at the National University of Singapore. As some of you might have already known, I'm currently under the Life Sciences and Doctor of Veterinary Medicine concurrent degree program. As part of the program requirements, we have to overload the first three semesters of our uh, study. And I must say, during this period of time, it was extremely stressful as I had to deal with the additional workload. However, from the second semester onwards, something in me changed and I eventually managed to do way better than I expected. As such, I'd like to share with you guys uh, some of the tips and tricks that I've gained through the course of my study. And these will come in the form of the SCAP framework, which is basically success equals to knowledge plus attitude plus behavior. Under the attitude section, one of the most crucial factors that you should take into account is that you are a student whose primary goal is to study. This is very important especially when you decide to overload all your university modules. As such, throughout the course of your semester, you should spend a bulk of your time studying. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean that you can't take time off to relax and to unwind. This, even though your studies are very important, your mental well-being is of equal or even greater importance as well. As such, you should take time off once in a while to, sp to spend time to recharge and to re-energize yourself. Maybe you could spend your time having dinner with your friends, or you could spend some time exercising and doing whatever you like to do. The key thing here is to keep your mind engaged, and this should come in the form of doing something that is unrelated to your studies. The third tip under attitude would be to learn to let go of your expectations. This is actually the hardest tip to achieve and it was something that I struggled with in the first semester of my study as well. This basically means letting go of all expectations that you have on yourself every time you submit an assignment or before you sit for an exam. And one method that I found to be really helpful so far is to tell myself a mantra just before I start the exam. Usually what I'll do is to tell myself that I've really done my best, whatever happens, happens, before taking a deep breath and starting my exam. Learning to let go of the high expectations that you have on yourself allows you to perform to your fullest potential during the exam. As you are feeling less anxious and your mind is less occupied thinking about negative thoughts such as, I, I can't do this, this exam is too difficult, why don't I know this? Because your mental capacity is not preoccupied with these negative thoughts, you are able to allocate this additional capacity focusing on trying to overcome the challenges and difficulties of the questions that are posed in the paper, thereby making it more likely that you can overcome and find the solutions to these questions. Under the behaviour section, I have three tips. The first tip is to ensure that you are consistent throughout the course of your semester. Consistency means putting in the same amount of hours even during periods where your assignment workload is minimal. This means that you could spend your time maybe revising or catching up your studies during periods of minimal workload. I find that this is much better than mugging last minute as even though mugging allows you to cover the content within a short amount of time, it does not allow you to achieve a greater depth of understanding that can be achieved with constant periodic revision. The second tip will be to minimize procrastination during your semester. To do well, I find that starting on your assignments early and gradually working on them daily is much more effective than doing your assignments last minute. This is because it reduces anxiety and allows you to reflect and to refine on your answers. Moreover, if you are a science student like me, you need to support your arguments and justifications with scientific papers. And finding these articles can often be really time consuming as you need to spend time finding them online, reading them before evaluating whether they can be used to support your argument or not. Thus, what I find to be really helpful in minimizing procrastination is to set many multiple uh, mini deadlines for myself and resolving to complete them individually. This makes the work less overwhelming and also motivates me to push on whenever I complete 
a de mini deadline. The third tip would be to get sufficient sleep. This means that for most of us, we need to get about 7 to 8 hours of sleep daily. This gives our brain uh, enough time to consolidate and to retain the information that we have gained throughout the course of the day. Furthermore, by getting enough sleep, this results in us becoming more alert and more focused during the course of the day, thereby allowing us to learn new material better. Learning how to learn is one of the most crucial points under the knowledge section. There are many studying techniques out there, and you should take the time to read up on them and to experiment with them. This was what I did in the first semester. I basically found the studying techniques that were available online and experimented with them using quizzes assigned by my professors as a barometer. If you guys are interested, I can cover the st different studying techniques in a later video, but for now, I will highlight three broad points that I found to be especially helpful. The first point would be to test yourself frequently. If your school doesn't provide past year papers like mine, you can search for questions online instead. Some resources that I found to be especially helpful would be MIT OpenCourseWare or Khan Academy. Textbooks are also an alternative resource with practice questions that you could use. And I find that during doing practice questions just before you revise a particular technique is very effective in allowing you to identify gaps in your current knowledge. By identifying gaps in your current knowledge, your brain will naturally focus on these particular sections when you, carry, when you revise the topic later on, thereby allowing you to benefit more from your revision sessions. The second tip will be to periodically revise. This ties in with the point on consistency earlier on. You should aim to revise frequently throughout the course of the semester. And you should aim to revise when your mind is slightly foggy about a particular concept or topic. You should aim to hit between completely forgetting everything and completely remembering everything. I find that revising a topic one day after lecture, three days after the first review, seven days, 21 days, and one to two months after the previous review is especially helpful and can serve as a guideline to guide your uh, revision planning. Moreover, revising the same content periodically can also result in you gaining a greater depth of understanding. This is because throughout the course of our semester, we will learn newer topics that are usually tied with the older ones. As such, when we visit, revisit older topics, we tend to create links with the newer topics, thereby allowing us to glean new insights that we might not have seen before. Lastly, the third tip would be to question what you are thinking. This is a skill that needs to be practiced, and it basically involves questioning the current concepts that you have, as well as um, why you are thinking something this way. For now, what you can do is to perhaps ask yourself why whenever you learn something new. If you don't know the answer to the question, you can always Google them online to find the answer. By actively interacting with the material, you are more likely to gain a greater depth of understanding which might benefit you in your, uh, during your examinations. So these are the three main tips that I found to be especially helpful in my academic journey so far. And I sincerely hope that these tips will benefit all of you in the same way that it has benefited me. I also hope that you guys will continue to support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And see you all in future videos.